This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire. Environmental Clean Technologies Limited, AXS code ESI, has signed a fairly significant heads of agreement for the staged investment in a special purpose vehicle by a Vietnamese based company to establish a plant for the production of 20 million tonnes per annum of coal dry, a black coal substitute over the next 30 years. Now as we move into a mandated lower emissions future, any technology that can add to the bottom line by increasing efficiency while reducing emissions will likely have a very profitable time of it. So it is with Environmental Clean Technologies coal dry process, the world's first economic method for dewatering brown coal, creating a high energy pellet with significantly reduced CO2 emissions compared to brown coal while being suitable for export as a black coal substitute. Now this Australian design technology has global applications but with any luck the first commercially operating plant will be built in Victoria's brown coal rich La Trobe Valley. Joining me is the CEO of Environmental Clean Technologies, Cos Galtos. Hi Cos. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well. What's the potential value of the Vietnamese investment in dollar terms? Well up to six billion dollars in capex for that plant alone. Six billion dollars? Australian dollars, yes. That's a staggering deal you've just done. It's pretty big. It's pretty big indeed. I think uh, more importantly is we've been able to um, resolve fair terms for the company. We'll be earning a $5 royalty per tonne produced uh, linked to inflation and a 10% free carry equity stake in the special purpose vehicle as well, undilutable. So what precise roles will each partner take in the new vehicle? Well, clearly it's our local market and uh, it's for us to uh, help the Vietnamese to access that local market. Um, they've taken a significant risk from um, any fair analysis point of view um, and we will be helping to set up that special purpose vehicle and transferring our existing partners across to it which include, uh, let me go, Arup as, it is, as the designer, um, McConnell Dow as the constructor and Transfield Services Australia as the operator. So why is the coal dry process seen as so important by the Vietnamese investors? Well I think that um, there's a lot of coal out there that's unexploitable uh, or is being exploited with co-located power generation because one of the problems of brown coals, lignitants and subbituminous coals is they can spontaneously combust and hence it can't be transported because those coals are so wet they've, they're very high in terms of CO2 emission and by drying those coals out you can do two things. One is you can transport them so power stations that would otherwise have to use less high quality coals or low quality coals can now benefit from using uh, uh, more easily available feedstock and the other is simply by uh, burning it in situ you decrease your CO2 emission and uh, generate more from your current investment if you're a power station. So it's a win-win-win really isn't it? Oh absolutely the other big victory for us is that we recover all the water that we take out of the coal is class A distilled water so it also contributes to the drought, drought proofing strategies of the power stations. So we're looking at about, what, two tonnes of brown coal to will produce one tonne of coal dry and about one tonne of water, is that correct? That's correct. In fact, the least economic place we could build one of these plants is Australia in the Latrobe Valley because the very high, um, high water content in the coal. Victorian coal has about 62% moisture content and about 8 gigajoules per tonne of energy in the coal itself, the original coal. By the time it's been through our process, it turns out as one tonne of coal dry pellets and a thousand litres of water for every two tonnes of coal processed. But if we, for example, take an example doing 150,000 tonnes of offtake per year in a plant here in Australia, if we move that plant to a location that had 50% had, uh, moisture content, we get 200,000 tonnes of offtake from the very same asset. So much better returns for investors in other markets. What kind of existing power plants can actually use coal dry? Well, it's a black coal substitute, so any uh, power station capable of burning high-quality black coal could immediately burn the fuel. Um, for power stations that use less energy-intensive feedstock, there would need to be some capital modification to their boilers to burn it. Uh, well worth it when it comes down to the savings and extra profitability, they'd say. But um, uh, we could also burn a shandy of, say, 10 to 20% of our feedstock mixed in with the local Latrobe Valley coal, and generate significant CO2 savings. So uh, coal dry can also be used for coal to oil production. How efficient is that? Well, it's a gateway technology. Um, coal to oil relies upon the removal of the moisture to, a, to an acceptable level within the coal. And until they're able to do that at a commercial, uh, commercially acceptable, acceptable price, uh, coal to oil doesn't move forward. 
The economic benefits to Victoria, should such a plant go ahead, are fairly obvious, but can the state provide the power and transport infrastructure to make a coal dry plant construction in the Latrobe Valley a viable one? Well, goodness knows the state needs the rail and port infrastructure as it is. Um, right now, our estimates are there's only about 2.5 to 3 million tonnes of remaining rail and port infrastructure to get exports out of the state. So uh, this is a nice um, spur to action. I think the state has the willingness to do so. Uh, now that we have a serious agreement on the table, I believe we'll have serious conversations about that with the state. And for the power stations as well, uh, it's a serious order which represents profits for them, um, and everyone can do with some of those right now. So what kind of status would such a plant attract under the federal government's proposed ETS? That's a great question. My company has uh, survived without any government grants whatsoever, except for, I, I tell a fib there, $200,000 helped us with the water recovery elements. Our general strategy has been not to spend our money in a, the application of grants or application for grants, but to focus on being as commercially viable as possible. What we've achieved has occurred with limited government assistance, and uh, so the best people to ask about how they can help us would be the federal government, because we're doing this on a commercially viable basis, unlike many of our competitors. Okay, so the plan would be, assuming the uh, plant goes ahead, the cold dry plant, uh, the uh, the brown or the, the cold dry would be effectively exported to southern China. Is am I reading that correctly? That's right. I think it'll be a combination of southern China and v Vietnam. Um, I think a bit will be consumed there as well, but I know that they have existing orders to existing clients in Vietnam, in Vietnam and China, and the Chinese are more than happy to uh, burn the fuel. Uh, we had many of them in the Latrobe Valley recently for a tour with us. Is it possible that future coal dry plants in Australia could supply the uh, local brown coal fire power stations with the obvious environmental benefits there? Would that be a longer term plan? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, clearly part of our intentions. In fact, we would we would be prepared to subsidise the manufacture of um, of for those plants to make it even more economic. Uh, I think the local power stations have a number of issues they've got to deal with, and we're very, very keen to develop our local partnerships and create a, a partnering model with them that's attractive. How long a process do you envisage uh, before the first sort of soils turn for the uh, first proposed plant? That's a great question. We're ready to move. It, uh, from our point of view, it would take us less than six months to get to final construction design. Wow. We did, yeah, exactly. We've done a lot of work. We had a very, very strong partner in Arup, uh, well known as a global engineering house that's very, very conservative. They did our pre-feasibility designs and studies for us, and uh, that's the numbers that we're working on. We can turn the designs we currently have, which represents a few million dollars worth of design, into construction-ready drawings because the partnering approach we took with Arab and with McConnell Dow, the preferred constructor. And I guess the potential for the uh, cold dry technology to be marketed further internationally is more than good, isn't it? Well, there's well over 1,500 locations we've identified around the world where power stations are burning lignite or subbituminous coals, uh, better known in Australia as brown coals. Um, as you would assume, a percentage of those would be likely to burn our fuel in the future. Cos Galtos, Chief Executive of Environmental Clean Technologies Limited. Appreciate your time today, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire.